Welcome to worship at Heritage Presbyterian Church on this Lord's Day. We are glad you're here with us, some in the sanctuary and many watching on Facebook Live. And now we are also available on YouTube, uh, at live on YouTube at uh, U- YouTube HPC Mason. Uh, you'll see uh, the first thing that's up there right now is uh, Susie Foss's shining face. So. Um, from last week's, but hopefully this week's is streaming there right now, so you can go there if you prefer um, YouTube over Facebook. But if you are on Facebook Live, we invite you to use your phone and take a picture of that QR code and sign in. Use a sign-in sheet will come up and you can sign in. You can also give prayer requests that day. If you're here in the sanctuary, you can also use that QR code. It's on the back, back of the bulletin. Or out there on a sign to sign in and also to make your prayer requests. You can uh, give online at hpcmason.org. Follow the link there, or if you're here in person, there are offering plates out in the atrium where you can put your offering. Um, we invite you, if you're here, to stay for coffee hour out in the uh, uh, overhang after worship today. Uh, and we invite you, if you're here in the building to use that QR code for prayer requests. And also, if you are watching on Facebook Live, you can uh, use the comment bar. Uh, somebody's monitoring that, and uh, we'll, we can include your prayer, your joys and concerns in our uh, prayers today. As we come before God, hear the good news of the gospel. God is working right now to bring abundant life in this world. Let us worship God.
Please stand and join me for the responsive call to worship. Our help is in the name of the holy God who made heaven and earth. Blessed be God, who has not given us over to our enemies. If it had not been God who was on our side, we would have been swallowed by our enemies. Our help is in the name of the holy God who made heaven and earth. Let us worship God. seated. Please join me in the prayer of confession, followed by your silent personal prayer. God, our Redeemer, we confess that we remain captivated by sin. You let the oppressed go free, but we allow oppression to continue. You give away the keys to your realm, but we try to stand guard at the gates. Forgive us, liberate us, let us no longer bound by sin, but released, restored, set free to worship and serve you in freedom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me in the unison assurance of pardon. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old, the old life, life has gone, gone. A, new a new life, life has, has begun. begun. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Amen. Amen. Thanks be, be to God. God. In, in Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ we, we are, are forgiven. forgiven. the Lord be with you. As a sign of reconciliation, please share the peace of Christ with your brothers and sisters.
Please be seated. Join me in the unison prayer of illumination. God, our helper, by your Holy Spirit, open our minds as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed. We may be led to your truth and taught your will for the sake of Jesus Christ. Please join me in the response of Psalm 124. The north side is to your right, and those on the left side is your south. No, no. For those at home, oh, I have that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Directions aren't my strength, I apologize. <laughs> there we go. For those at home, why don't you split it up in your house as well? If it had not been the Lord who is on our side, let Israel now say. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side. When our enemies attacked us. Then they would have swallowed us up alive. When their anger was kindled against us. Then the flood would have swept us away. The torrent would have gone over us. Then over us would have gone. The raging waters. Blessed be the Lord, who has not given us as a prey to their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken, and we have escaped. Our, Our help, help is in the, is the name, name of the Lord, Lord who, made who made heaven, heaven and, and earth. earth. Kids of the kingdom and those at home, gather around your TV to join Mrs. Foss for children's time. Good morning and get ready. The world is really confusing these days, isn't it? Oh, my heavens, it's so confusing. We don't know what the right answer is. We're looking, we don't, we don't know if we're going to school or not going to school. Am I, is school open, is school closed? Am I allowed to do sports? I don't know, am I allowed to do sports? Do I have to wear a mask? What kind of a mask do I have to wear? <sighs> it's exhausting and confusing. All these questions swirling around us. And then other days, everything is still and quiet, but we still have questions. Why can't I be with my friends right now? Is it safe for me to go to the grocery store? Is it safe for me to go to church? All sorts of questions. Adults call that chaos. One minute, everything is swirling around and we don't know what the right answer is. And then the next minute, everything is silent. It's very confusing. Chaos is very, very confusing. We don't know what's true. We don't know what we can depend on in chaos. But here's one thing that I know is true and I know that we can depend on. We can depend on God. God is always with us. God always protects us. And how do I know that? Well, I've been reading the Bible for a few years. I went to Sunday school for many, many years. Like you go to Sunday school. I, I did it a few more years than you did because I'm older than you are, but not quite as old as Pastor Kevin. That's not true. That's not true at all. <laughs> I listen. I listen to people who know and love Jesus and they tell me, that God is true and dependable, that God will protect us. And then I listen to what our pastors have to say when I'm sitting in worship, and I know that is true. I know from the Bible and all the stories we learn in Sunday school that God is true and faithful and God protects us. One of those stories you're going to hear about shortly, it's a story of Moses, and I know many of you have heard the story of Moses because your Sunday school teachers have taught you. Miss Nita has taught you about Moses, and Mrs. Hammond, and Mrs. Heinerman, and all Mrs. Staten, all of those wonderful teachers have taught you about Moses. And it was really early in Moses' life. Moses was about three months old, 
and Moses was a Hebrew baby. He was born in Egypt, and the ruler of Egypt was Pharaoh, and he was really, really mean. He was not kind at all. He was afraid that the Hebrew people would get really strong, and so he said to the Hebrew people, you're all going to be slaves. It was chaos, and then Pharaoh said, I don't want any of the baby boys to live. None of those Hebrew baby boys live. I want them all thrown into the Nile and killed. <sighs> That's chaos. Well, Moses' mom was a follower of God. She believed in God and trusted in God. And she did something really clever. She made a basket and put Moses in the basket and put him in the river. And he gently went down the Nile River. And here's where God steps in with some protection. That basket floated right to Pharaoh's daughter. And Pharaoh's daughter found baby Moses and said, oh, it's a Hebrew baby. I would like to raise this baby and take care of him. But she needed some helpers. Here's where God steps in with protection again. Moses' sister was standing by. And Moses' sister said to the Pharaoh's daughter, I know someone who can take care of that baby. Do you need a helper? And the Pharaoh's daughter said, absolutely. So Moses' sister went and got Moses' mom. The Pharaoh's daughter didn't know. God knew, though. God stepped in with protection. Moses went on to become a very faithful man of God, and God did amazing things with him. You know those stories, Moses in the burning bush, and Moses in the Ten Commandments, and Moses with, with manna. And those stories are all in the Bible. They all teach us how God has been protecting us since the beginning. Those are stories for another day, or maybe this afternoon you can open up your Bibles and take a look at those stories and remind yourselves. God protects us. God loves us. God is always faithful. All we have to do is look around and see God. Let's pray together by giving each other our blessing that we know. So either if you're in the sanctuary, catch the eyes of someone that you know, or if you're at home, look at one of your family members and let's bless each other. You can follow me. God created you. God loves you. God is always with you. Oh, 
lie crushed beneath his feet for the conqueror's reason. And as the stone is rolled away and Christ emerges from the grave, this victory march continues till the day every eye and heart shall Thank you, Karen and Sarah. This morning's Old Testament lesson comes from Exodus, the very first chapter of Exodus. Let us listen now to the word of God. Now, a new king arose over Egypt who did not know Joseph. He said to his people, look, The Israelite people are more numerous and more powerful than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, or they will increase. And in the event of war, join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Therefore, they set taskmasters over them to oppress them with forced labor. They built supply cities, Python, Ramses for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread so that the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. The Egyptians became ruthless in imposing tasks on the Israelites and made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and brick And in every kind of field labor, they were ruthless in all the tasks they imposed on the Hebrews. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shipra and the other Pua, when you act as midwives to the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stool, if it is a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, she shall live. But the midwives feared God. They did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but they let the boys live. So the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and said to them, why have you done this and allowed the boys to live? And the midwife said to Pharaoh, because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes to them. So Moses dealt well, or so God dealt well 
with the midwives, and the people multiplied and became very strong. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, every boy that is born to the Hebrews, you shall throw into the Nile but every girl you shall let live. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that the baby, that he was a fine baby, she hid him for three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. And she put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river while her attendants walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it in, to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying, and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter called to her, take this, said to her, take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and she took him as her son. She named him Moses, because she said, I drew him out of the water. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. It was a very pleasant week in Ohio, wasn't it? Temperature was not too hot during the day and and cool at night. It was just really, really nice. Low humidity, too. That's the thing I was trying to remember. Low humidity. And we are right now, on this very day, in the sweet spot between political conventions It's so peaceful and calm now. It would be easy to forget in this pleasant place the chaos that is going on in the world around us. In California, wildfires are flaring up because of the heat that is scorching the earth. It was 130 degrees one day in Death Valley, which is the highest temperature recorded on earth since 1913. And there are fires in Siberia as well. Wow. And in in Iowa, I think it was probably 10 days or two weeks ago, straight line winds, 120 miles an hour, took out houses, grain silos, and flattened billions of dollars worth of crops. And in the Atlanta, in the Atlantic now, there are two tropical storms brewing. And this isn't even talking about the coronavirus pandemic thing, which is causing all kinds of problems for colleges that brought their students back and after a week of classes are having to go to online classes. And right here in our own public local schools, Students and teachers are being isolated after exposure to coronavirus on the first day of class. Protests continue against racial injustice in many cities. 
And most appallingly, last week, 18 persons were shot in one night in four different locations right in Cincinnati. The world's fallen apart. Life cannot continue long in this kind of chaos. When we think about God at creation, God looked over, brooded, the Bible says, brooded over the formless void of the earth. It was chaos watery chaos that could not support life. So when God began to create, he first gave the foundation to the world with dry land and contained seas and sky that had boundaries. And then life was able to be created, and so he created life that could grow and multiply, and when he created that life, he said, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. God's purpose in creation is flourishing life. Exodus 1 that we started today follows immediately from Genesis. And the first 15 cha- or the last 15 chapters of Genesis deal with Joseph. Joseph who saved Jacob and his brothers by saving Egypt from a famine that would have killed many. But Exodus 1 starts ominously. It first says, before we were read, what we read says that Joseph's family had grown to be a people. So numerous that they were a people. And then ominously it says, a new king arose in Egypt who did not know Joseph. Did not know that Joseph had saved Egypt. The new king feels threatened by the Hebrews. He claims that they are an existential threat to Egypt. And so he begins to try to eliminate them. But weirdly, every time he does something to hamper them, they multiply more. And they spread more. They continue to grow. Pharaoh ultimately is thwarted by women who fear God instead of Pharaoh and have pity on a fine baby. The story of this attempted genocide is actually kind of humorous and ironic. That that image of Pharaoh summoning two midwives, two Egyptian midwives, little old ladies, coming before the mighty Pharaoh. It says, why aren't those babies being killed? And they tell him this ridiculous story about the vigor of Hebrew women is not like that of Egyptian women, and they deliver so quickly we can't get there in time. And then, ironically, ironically, it is Pharaoh's own daughter who brings the child up in Pharaoh's household who will defeat Pharaoh's successor and lead his people out of Egypt, drowning Pharaoh's army in the process. And ironically, God takes no action in this story, at least no obvious action. There are 
several godlike things that are going on, like that increase of the people of God, even though they're being oppressed and slaughtered, the little ones are being slaughtered, the creator God continues to bring forth life against these forces of death. And, and then there's the description of Moses as a fine baby. Well, fine translates the word that in Genesis 1 is translated good. God looked on the creation and saw that it was good. Moses is a new creation. And then there's this idea that the Nile is transformed from a place of death where the boy babies are thrown to drown into a place of life where the basket is withdrawn from the water. Basket, by the way, translates the word that in Genesis 8 through 11 is called an ark. So you get it, right? Out of the chaotic waters of the Nile comes the ark. Ark saving Moses. God is behind the scenes working this work. That's what we, we said in Psalm 124, which rejoices when it realizes that God had brought them the victory because God was on their side. It makes explicit this tie to the story and the tie that story has to creation and the Red Sea event. Without God on our side, the floods would have swept us away, we said. The torrent of waters and raging waters, we said. Chaos, the unbridled sea, would end them, would end God's people. But God saves life again through an ark. Joining God in this battle are five women. Two midwives who fear God, or maybe a better way to say that was they trust God and they trust God's way. God's way is life. They trust that way. God's going to keep bringing life. Moses' mother upon, and sister also, upon seeing that the baby is good, work to save him. And Moses' sister, <laughs> Moses' sister works it so that Pharaoh's daughter hires Moses' mother to nurse him. Another bit of humor in the text. But the Moses daughter, or Pharaoh's daughter has pity on Moses. And pity is connected to compassion, which we know Jesus had repeatedly and demonstrated repeatedly compassion is a chief characteristic of God. We talked about that a couple weeks ago. Pity motivates the daughter of Pharaoh to sneak this little Hebrew boy into the palace under Pharaoh's nose. Unlike the others, the daughter of Pharaoh was powerful, and she's the final person who saves the people by saving Moses. Her compassion moves her to action. She withdrew the child from the water. And that's, that's what happens to all the baptized. We are raised up from the water to new life, just like Moses was raised up out of the chaotic water of the Nile to life. You may not be so powerful as Pharaoh's daughter, but you do have some power. You may not have the power to change the world, but you can impact it. You may even, in this time of growing chaos, be able to bring some life to the world. The Egyptian princess and the midwives show us a little about how to join God's mission of life over chaos. 
The princess has pity and compassion on the baby. You have that capacity as well. And you do that. Keep giving compassion. In these times, we need compassion. Let your heart move you into action on behalf of the ones who are threatened and harmed in the chaos of these days. Have compassion instead of judgment on the homeless, on the jobless, on the suffering. Call out the self-serving and refuse to accept the exploitation of people, the environment, and the vulnerable by the powerful. The midwives show us what trust in God, God's way, means. They knew that God's way was not the way of death, so they chose to facilitate life. You know that God did not make white people to be better than dark people. You know that God did not make the wealthy to rule over the poor. You know that God did not make the shrewd to deceive the ignorant. You can take action against the waves of supremacy that threaten life, and you can encourage the thriving of all. Bev and I just watched a 2016 film. Yeah, we're way behind on our Netflix queue. It takes place, it's called The Innocents, and it takes place in a village, a Soviet-occupied village in Poland in the late fall of 1945. It centers around a French Red Cross doctor who is asked by some nuns at the convent to come and bring for an emergency, a medical emergency at the convent. And when she gets there, she finds a nun in labor trying to deliver a breech birth. And the doctor perform, miraculously performs a C-section in very primitive conditions. It turns out that when the Soviet army eight or nine months earlier had come through that village, they came to the convent there and took liberties. The chaos and evil of war deeply harmed these poor nuns, who by the time the doctor gets there are racked with guilt, fear, internal dissent, and loss of faith. The doctor would have diagnosed them with PTSD if she had had the nomenclature. Evil and chaos circle this convent as death lurks at the door. The mother superior has decided that no one should know about what happened to the convent because it would bring bring disrepute upon the women and the convent at a time when the new communist government was very antagonistic towards religion. So she hid the fact that there were eight pregnant nuns there. The pregnant nuns were deeply ashamed. None were planning to keep their babies. All were overwrought. Now, I hope I won't spoil the the film for you, though it is four years old and in French. So, yeah, I read the subtitles. I don't know French, but... But the mother superior was taking the babies immediately upon birth to homes in the village, she said. But a novice followed her to on the path that she took to the village, which went through a cemetery and saw the, woman, the, the mother superior 
lay the basket slash ark at the foot of a cross and shamefully hurry away. When the mother superior is confronted, the convent is torn apart. Some agreeing with her about protecting the order and others appalled at this anti-creation act. The convent is flying to pieces until the French doctor suggests a solution. She says, this village has a dozen or more war orphans running around. Why don't you turn the convent into an orphanage? And then it won't seem strange to have babies here. The doctor did not fear God, but she had compassion. Her compassion moved her to conceive of a way to save life and protect the reputations of the women. Chaos and death were overcome by obedience to life. God is still working for the salvation of the world and the flourishing of life. Join God. Turn trust in this way and lean into your compassion. Resist violence. Work for reconciliation. Tend the earth and the sky and the waters. In your baptisms, you too were brought through the waters and the floods to come into the fullness of God's creation. In your baptism, you promised to turn away from the ways of chaos and death to follow God's way of life and abundance. Lean into your compassion and pity. Trust God's way and join his work of creating abundant, flourishing life. The peace of the Lord be with you. Sorry. We are joining in our uh, saying what we believe using the Nicene Creed. Let us say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from light, light from light, true God from true God, 
begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate in the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. He, for our sakes, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we re for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. As we come together in our time of prayer, we have some joys and concerns to share. Uh, some joys, Leslie Dower Creek uh, and her family are rejoicing in the birth of a child to her cousin, Adelina Jody Baker is the child who was born. So we rejoice with the, the Dower Creek family. And Judith Olson has prayers of thanks for a negative COVID-19 test this week. Yes, we are thankful. Uh, we have some concerns also. Um, Alana Plessinger asks for continued prayers for Marcy Smith, her friend, as she battles kidney cancer. And Lucy Atkinson, uh, oh, and also uh, Teresa Stanford is, um, has some uh, health problems. And Nancy Arbuckle continues to be in the hospital. She's the uh, uh, mother of Stacy Dykes. And Marilyn Johnson is also recovering at Mason Christian Village from uh, a broken hip. And Lucy Atkinson asked for prayers for her family and friends uh, for, of her aunt, Jan Grant, who passed away earlier last week. And we, uh, all of us, are grieving today uh, the loss of Florence Bojan. Uh, she passed away Thursday night. Uh, she, uh, as most of you know, was uh, one of the founding pastors of Heritage Presbyterian Church. She was the pastor of Somerset Presbyterian Church that merged with the Mason Presbyterian Church. And she has been a devoted uh, leader of this congregation for nearly 30 years. Uh, she, she has gone to be with Rudy claimed the victory of the resurrection, and we rejoice in that for her. There will be a uh, private family funeral uh, tomorrow, um, and a, at some time when we can all get together and uh, Florence's family can all get together, uh, there will be a public memorial service. Um, so you want to keep uh, Florence's family in your prayers and rejoice. Rejoice in the life that she lived among us as a servant of God. The family uh, asked that uh, one of the scripture passages be Micah 6.8. What does the Lord require of you but to love justice and walk humbly before your God? And we know that Florence loved Jesus love justice, and walk humbly before our God. And now she's with God, and we praise God for that. Let us come now to our time of worship. Let us pray. Almighty King, over all the earth, we bow before you as our true sovereign. Blessed, blessed be your name. Your name is greater than any earthly ruler, your reign more just, and your bounty more prosperous than we can conceive. We praise you, holy be God, because your purpose is purely for our sakes. You do not serve yourself. You are not frightened into terrible acts. 
but act justly and for the sake of creation. We praise you, Lord, that again and again you raised up persons to lead your people and to join you in your work for our salvation and the flourishing of the world you created. We praise you for midwives and loving mothers and undermining daughters of the powerful who accomplish your will. We praise you most of all for your son Jesus, whose compassion for us reflected your own and brought life into its full bounty to us. Glory and honor to the holy God of all. Lord, look with compassion on the world you have made. We pray for those suffering from natural disasters in California and across the globe. Bring rains to calm fires and slow winds that bring destructive hurricanes. Help us to have compassion and care for those in need. We pray for Cincinnati as it struggles through a time of heavy violence that has injured so many and taken lives. Bring an end to such outbursts. Bring healing and peace. We pray for those touched in such negative ways by the coronavirus. We rejoice that uh, Judith Olson tested negative, but we pray for those who continue to suffer from job losses and pray that you sustain those who are unemployed and bring opportunities for work, bring healing to the sick and comfort the dying. We pray for students, teachers, and staff at schools and universities that they might learn in a safe environment. Today we both grieve and rejoice in the passing of our sister Florence to glory. We praise you for the life that she lived and the service that she gave to you among us and to many others. We thank you that for her the twilight time of decline has passed and she has been made whole in the heavenly realm. We pray for all those who mourn her loss. Stand with them and give them comfort and hope in the resurrection to eternal life. And we pray also for the family and friends of Jan Grant, that you would comfort them in this time of their loss. We pray for healing, for Teresa Stanford, Nancy Arbuckle, Marilyn Johnson, Marcy Smith. And we give thanks as we rejoice with Leslie Dower Creek and her family in the birth of Adelina Jody Baker and pray for her good health and rich life. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would raise us in such trust to you that we might join you in your work to bring life in the world you have created. Give us courage to stand against those who would use their power to bring harm instead of good. Help us to know how to live that we might help life flourish abundantly. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray, and we pray as he taught us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We have uh, some announcements in the uh, bulletin, which you can find on uh, hpcmason.org uh, about our life together. We invite you to participate in the things that you can. There's all kinds of Bible studies going on, and there are links there uh, that you can uh, use to contact uh, Susie or me with regard to those Bible studies and other things that are being engaged in. We want to remind you that IHN is continuing to house homeless folks, their clients, in motels. 
that costs $33 a night per room, and if you want to contribute to that, that would be great. You can contribute it to Heritage and mark it for um, uh, our, uh, IHN, or you can send it directly to IHN in Lebanon. We continue also to collect uh, sandwiches for our daily bread. You can talk to Nelson Kennedy uh, to arrange for uh, making those sandwiches and delivering them. Also want to mention that uh, for many years, uh, Heritage has had a blood drive in um, October, usually it's in October, uh, right here where we've had Hawks Hawksworth uh, Blood Mobile here and, and uh, collecting blood. Uh, they, they don't longer do that for us, but we continue to invite you to contribute to the flourishing of life by contributing uh, blood to Hawksworth. Um, and I mentioned before that YouTube shows this service also at um, Mason, HBC Mason on YouTube. Finally, we come to our time to worship God with our gifts and our offerings. I invite you to give online or give here in the offering plates in the atrium, but also give yourself, present yourself to God in this time of offering. God calls you to be compassionate. Offer up your compassion to God. Let us worship God. provided each of us with similar yet unique gifts. Thank you, Lord, for the talents and abilities of this congregation. We are blessed. Thank you, Lord, for uniting us and giving us the opportunity to support our spiritual transformation. Amen.
go into the world and join God's work of flourishing life, have compassion on those in need, stand against the powerful who oppress, and live faithfully towards God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord be kind and gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen.